Nothing is more inspiring to me than the fact that we, our species, Homo sapiens sapiens, have survived. According to certain ologists, we have come close twice to not being here. And at one point, we were down to pitifully few breeding pairs. And somehow we rallied back. One of the things about us is if you look at this animal, we are not particularly strong. So anything that wishes to fight us is probably going to win. We're not particularly fast, so if it wishes to chase us, it's probably going to catch us. We don't climb very well. If it has the unction to come after us, we're caught. And although we can swim, we don't float very well. So if we're in the water, anything that wishes to make us lunch can do so. Right? So what has kept us? Here, amongst many things, I think, is our ability to communicate with one another. And that's what we've been doing all day. We've been communicating. Communication is what we do. It's who we are. So therefore, for me, poetry and storytelling and song, I try to mix all three of them together because those are the ways that our ancestors have learned to communicate. It's one of those things that has kept us here. That and opposable thumbs. <laughs> Which we still use to do what? Communicate. <laughs> So in our tribes, our various tribes, it would be always someone who would stand up in front of the people and when he or she would say a word or a passage or a phrase or make a gesture, the tribe would talk back to that person to let that person know they were not alone. We will attempt to create a tribe here tonight. I'm going to ask you to give me one word. When I do like this, I want you to give me one Anglo-Saxon interrogative gruntable. Yes, you said it in your head. That word is what? Just think back to the times you discovered that your parents were hypocrites. What? <laughs> so that's a very important word. What are we? What are we doing here? What does it mean to be human? What time is lunch? <laughs> All of the important things, right? So let's, let's try this. Okay, all right, we have a little problem. If you get stuck, close your eyes, Go deep inside, I want you to find that big black woman that lives at the center of every American and say, Maybell, help me out. So she makes sure you're not scared. She will often show up looking very much like Aretha Franklin. So let's try this again. What? Exactly. So let's take it back to the dawn of time before technology tamed our minds when a man took his hands and began to clap and that was the beginning of the boom boom bap let's take it back to the dawn of time before technology tamed our minds when a woman started humming to an animal's call and that was the beginning of the yes yes y'all a yes yes y'all Yes, yes, y'all. It's like that, it's like that, it's like that, y'all. Uh, yes, yes, y'all. Uh, yes, yes, y'all. Really, according to some sociolinguists and ethnomusicologists, it's kind of like that. So, once again, here we are again, needing to feel what it means to be skin. To feel the systole and diastole getting rolled into poetry, music, funk, hop, and whatever comes from the soul. We know the body has intelligence of which the intellect cannot dismiss a consequence of biocultural experience. But let's take a quick trip and get a sense of what it means for you and me to have become human beings. Back in a time of which we cannot recall, our ancestors drummed. In the hum of night, under these same stars they believed were gods that shone down as they danced by the firelight. Their bodies casting shadows. Voices started grunting, imitating animals they knew they would be hunting on the next day to provide sustenance for the tribe. This was a ritual intended to recognize that life is born of death. 
Like sunrise and set, cycles from east to west, the drums would beat, feet began to step. Moving from right to left, the men leapt. As the chants began to rise from the women's breath. This is why this thing we do with music and poetry and dance and communication calls the blood. It's been this way since we crawled from the mud. An ancient thing banging in the body and mind that we've been grooving to people since the dawn of time. So check it. Let's take it back to the dawn of time. Before technology tamed the mind, a man took his hands and began to clap. And that was the beginning of the boom, boom, bap. Uh, let's take it back to the dawn of time Before technology tamed the mind A woman started humming to an animal's call And that was the beginning of the yes, y'all A uh, yes, yes, y'all Yes, yes, y'all It's like that, it's like that, it's like that, y'all A uh, yes, yes, y'all A uh, yes, yes, y'all It's like whether Irish or English or Spanish, Danish or Swedish or Polish, Russian or Turkish, Italian, German or Kurdish, Japanese or Assyrian, Javanese or Armenian, Portuguese or Hungarian, Hebrew, Zulu, Bavarian, no matter the tongue you speak, every language it has a beat, the body instinctively can translate into music. See, what science has found is we are creatures of sound and our ears need to seek rhythmic patterns in human speech, like the words that I'm spitting. Hear the rhythm that's in them even before you get a hint of any content I'm kicking. You first think nothing of it, but the verbal percussion begins to drum it inside of you, and then your blood begins rushing. Your pulses get to throbbing, your head begins to bobbing. You feel in the effect of what the rhythm has been plotting. It's gotten you to synchronize your alpha waves and realize that rhythms more than musical, but structurally underlies each and every atom to plasma scattered on Saturn. Every stage of matter is organized in rhythmic patterns which are architectonic because everything has a tonic, everything has a cycle, everything has a phonic. All life depends upon it because we're engineered to want it. This thing that remains, refrains, comes back is chronic. This thing that haunts us all like ghosts in the mind. We've been dancing with people since the dawn of time. So check it. Let's take it back to the dawn of time. Before technology tamed the mind, a man took his hands and began to clap. And that was the beginning of the boom, boom, bap. Let's take it back to the dawn of time. Before technology tamed the mind, a woman started humming to an animal's call. And that was the beginning of the yes, y'all. A yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. It's like that, it's like that, it's like that y'all, a uh, yes, yes, y'all, a uh, yes, yes, y'all. It's like mount on out, mount on that y'all. It's like 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 a It's like that. Thank you. Thank you. It's one of the other reasons we survived. I didn't say get quiet. <laughs> Guys kind of knew when to get quiet. Body language, look, the way the voice sounds, not even just the words themselves, but it's another reason that kept us here. And I guess we're always trying to find out what it means to be here. And therefore, we create these systems that help us to understand this existence in which we find ourselves. And one of those systems that I fell in love with many years ago was philosophy. And I realize that many in our country don't like that philosophy stuff. You know, I mean, it's a, let's face it, it's an endeavor that's thousands and thousands of years old of asking questions, and we've not answered one question yet. <laughs> you know, and, you know, in a culture where it's like, yo, I want a turkey done in 10 minutes, you know, having a system of questions that goes on forever just is not our thing. <laughs> but hopefully we can change a bit of that because we do need that in what philosophy gives us because it asks us to answer some of the huge questions in our lives and think about what it is that inspires us. Better up,
We poets, no matter what we write, we realize we're only talking two things. Eros and Thanatos. Two words the Greeks give us. One is about love, the other is about death. Now we know that last one, Thanatos, has us all on GPS. And it's about to ping us at any time. And what we're really hoping is that other one, that little Eros, that love, can find us before the GPS, before death GPSs us. Some of us find ourselves to be that lucky. It's going to be a word in this piece I'm about to do. The word is thanatoi. It's a Greek word for those who must die. That would be us. The eighth thanatoi were the gods, those who could not die. Let them write their own stuff. This is about us, the flame that will one day out, out, brief candle. And what we really know about what it means to be here is that here we are in a sea of stars Somewhere between Venus and Mars Short-lived hominids hanging about Doing our best just to figure it out Where do we come from? Where do we go? What does it mean to question? What does it mean to know? What is this thing we have deemed as reality? I mean, is it real? Or is it just an imagined fallacy that we all have invented from our collective senses? Is this world merely a screen upon which shadows are beamed as they radiate emanating from a light screamed from behind us? Why does space and time seem to confine us? Is there more to us or are we just dust floating in this vat of galactic blackness? Does anybody, anybody, anybody does anybody really really know what the fact is i mean like um is there a being listening to prayer or are we alone and there's nothing there well hey i don't know the math but i know somehow that one life plus two short equals live your life now because here we are in a sea of stars somewhere between venus and mars short lived hominids hanging about doing now well, best just to figure it out. I see it. Here we are in a sea of stars somewhere between Venus and Mars. Short lived hominids hanging about just doing our best to figure it out. And there have been some cats who come along to try to help us do that. And some of you guys know the names. You've read them. You might have forgotten them. You ought to try them out again. Brush them off. Make them your friends. Names like Aristotle, Plato, Zeno, and Parmenides, Epicurus, Augustine, Sartre, and Socrates, Bodhidharma, Gautama, Kant, and Protagoras, Kierkegaard, Hegel, Emerson, and Pythagoras, all of them relentlessly question the menjons that make up the makeup of human existence, the manic and the madness, the panic and the sadness, the inner and the outness, the how to be withoutness. You know, the Greeks called us thanatoi, y'all. Meaning our lives are so brief, we might as well not live at all. But isn't that part of what beauty we possess? The fact that we're born in this flesh means we're all destined for death and that we're all just borrowing breath that'll pass to another just as soon as we've left. The only moments we know for sure we have is what the fates allow. Life is lived quick, so when should you live? Cause here we are in a sea of stars Somewhere between us and Mars Short little hominids hanging about Doing our best just to figure it out I said here we are in a sea of stars Somewhere between Venus and Mars Short little hominids hanging about Doing our best to figure it out If you've got something that makes you want to take the next breath Hang on to it Milk it for every ounce of loveliness that you can get from it As far as we know, this is it And all that's ever gonna be Let's make everything we do an act of art and inspiration Thank you